कृपा सनाथ कहा दस रघुनाथ पति पाव कहा दस रघुनाथ पति पाव कहा मोर भट जुग कहा कबीरा हे काले कोटा गेला गौरा नथरा पाषा ने कुटी भ अनाले फसीब फसे अनाले फसीब गौरंग गुनेरा निधि कथा गले पाब गगुने रिधि कथा गले पे सब संगीरा संगे जे खय लीला से संगना पाया कंदे नारो तमोद संगना पाया कारो तमोद से संगना पाया कंदे नारो तम दे संग पे आनील प्रे मधन कारुना प्रचु नील प्रेम धना करुणा प्रचु हे न प्रभु कोथा केला अच्छाया ठाकू Ah, we can show the translation. He who brought the treasure of divine love, and who was filled with compassion and mercy, where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where am I, Swarup Damodar, and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bata and Gopal Bata? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Goranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. 
Where will I find Lord Goranga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Goranga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Narottam Das simply weeps. So this song was written by our Narottam Das Thakur at a point in his life when he went to Brindaban to get the association of the Goswamis, the six Goswamis whose names are all mentioned here, as well as Krishnadas Kaviraj and Srinivas Acharya. But unfortunately, he uh, arrives in Vrindavan and they're all left this world. And so he's bereft of their association. He's spent his life serving their mission, serving their, their instructions, their vapu, preaching and converting fallen souls to Krishna consciousness. And he goes to Vrindavan to fi fi get their association, their company again, and they're gone, all gone. Everybody's gone. <laughs> no, no association. So the attitude that he has is, I'll, they're all gone, I'll just bash my head against the rocks and, and burn myself up in fire. That's how intense he was feeling separation from these acharyas. He was so dependent on them, so surrendered, so completely uh, immersed in their thought. But they were all gone. And so he laments. Um, so this was towards the beginning of his he was younger at this time, but uh, still he stayed in Vrindavan and preached and preached in other places. And uh, this is the example of the attitude that a disciple has towards his guru. And today is, of course, the divine disappearance of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. So, fortunately, I was one to get a little association. But all of you should, uh, should be weeping oceans of tears, having never gotten his association. Because that period of time when Prabhupada was here was most special. And em empowering, it was special. And this is the attitude of the disciple towards his guru. When the guru leaves, whether it's a siksha guru, diksha guru, he feels his life is without worth because everything the disciple has obtained spiritually is because of the mercy of the guru and Krishna. Like Sri Guru Charan Padma Kevala Bhakati Sadma Bandon Moi Savadama Asha Jahara Prasad Ebai E Bhava Yai Krishna Prapti So the Guru he gives us over to Krishna. When the Guru is pleased he gives us over to Krishna. He recommends us to Krishna. So that's why it's so important to take the instructions of the spiritual master. Krishna consciousness is not a... Um, something to be taken lightly. It is the ultimate goal of life. What Srila Prabhupada has represent, has, is representing still and has represented through the disciplic succession, the Guru Parampara, is the most significant, the most detailed, the most scientific, the most 
um, uh, the deepest spiritual knowledge of the relationship, the sambandha, the relationship of God and the living entity and the material world, and finally his release to the spiritual world. So Prabhupada gave us this gift. So when he left us in 1977, it was like, where do we go now? Where do we turn now? Everyone was in complete uh, lamentation and bewilderment. Our master has gone. We will beat our heads against the rocks. We will throw ourselves into the fire, cast ourselves into the fire because our master is gone. So it was great lamentation to see Prabhupada go. Um, it's not a happy thing. There are videos you can watch of Prabhupada leaving, lying on his bed at the last few days, still so translating the Bhagavatam for us. Someone is holding the microphone over his mouth and uh, Pradumna is reading the verses from the 10th canto and Prabhupada is translating them and giving the purports while he's lying on his deathbed. So such a great acharya. We see Prabhupada like that. That's the greatest acharya, the Jagat Guru. Sometimes that term is used loosely and people call so many gurus Jagat Guru. But what does it mean? Jagat Guru means someone who is powerful enough to deliver the entire universe. And that was Prabhupada. Someone of that, that caliber that they are able to deliver the entire universe. Like we know the story of Vasudev Datta. He also... He prayed to the Lord that you keep me here in the material world and just deliver all of the living entities. I'll stay here and suffer for their sins. That was his attitude. So Prabhupada also was very, so compassionate and so uh, concerned for the welfare of all beings. And we as his disciples and grand disciples and followers feel great separation on this day um, that he is no longer here to guide us. But somehow we're carrying on, we're going on with his mission and he is empowering us and giving us intelligence, guidance. I just read today on uh, someone sent me an email and Prabhupada is saying, I never feel that I am separated from my spiritual master. I always feel that he is watching me and is within my heart guiding me. So that's another side of it where you feel the guru, that you, one's guru is still with you, guiding you through his instructions and that he's seeing you. But the other side of it is there is separation, of course. There is still separation. And then further beyond that, we know that Prabhupada is somewhere else preaching. There's that poem by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he reasons ill who thinks that Vaishnavas die while thou art still in sound. For, how does it go? For, while while thou art still living, the Vaishnav lives and st still spreads the holy name around. Yeah, the, the poetry is a little nicer than... <laughs> yeah. So he's always living, spreading the holy name around, whether in this world or another world. And so this song, Jay Anilo Premadana, expresses the deep separation when the guru, the acharya, leaves this world. And uh, so we should feel this today because this separation is another purification. It makes us feel very deeply the need, 
the want and the need, the desire, the longing, the thirsting to have his guidance, to be with him through his vani, uh, va uh, vani instruction. The vapu, the form is temporary, but the vani is eternal. And Prabhupada also said in the introduction of the Krishna book that the, again, I'm forgetting how it's exactly said, uh, but the, the guru never passes away, he never dies, and those who are his followers live with him through his instructions. So we live with Prabhupada through his instructions. That's how we maintain our life, through his instructions. So we'll, we'll sing uh, Sri Guru Charana Padma. Kurunath is really late, huh? The Kurunath is really late. <laughs> Maybe traffic. Sri Guru Charana Padma Devala Bhakati Sadma Charana Padma La Bhakati Sadma Vandan Mui Savadhama Mate Jahada Prasade Bai E Baba Tahari Jai Krishna prapti hoi jaha hoi te Guru mukha padma vakya jite te kari aikya Arna kori hamane asha Sri Guru Charane Rati E Seyutamagati Jai Prasade Pure Sarva Asha Jai Prasade Pure Sarva Asha Sade Pure Sarva Chakudan ki lo jai janme janme prabhu jai Chakudan ki lo jai janme janme prabhu jai Devya gyan hride prakashito Devya Gyan Hride Prokashito Devya Gyan Hride Prokashito 
Prema bhakti ja hoite avidya vinashayate Prema bhakti ja hoite avidya vinashayate Dei dei gai jahada charito Dei dei gai jahada charito Sri Guru Karuna Sindhu Adhama Janada Bandhu Sri Guru Karuna Sindhu Adama Janara Bandhu Karuna Sindhu Adama Janara Lokanata Lokeda Jeevana Lokanata Lokeda Jeevana Aha Prabhu Khoda Doya De Hamode Pada Chaya Aha Prabhu Khoda Doya De Hamode Pada Chaya Ebe Asha Gushuk Tribhuvana Ebe yasha gushuk tribu vana Aha prabhu koro noya ne hamode pada chaya Aha prabhu koro noya ne hamode pada chaya Do we for day loyla charana? A Prabhu pan patita pavana. Prabhu pan, the Prabhu pan, the Prabhu pan, Jaya Prabhu pan. Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jaya Prabhu Pan. Prabhu Pan, Ki Jai. Translation. Ah. The lotus feet of our spiritual master are the only way by which we can attain pure devotional service. I bow down to his lotus feet with great awe and reverence. By his grace, one can cross the ocean of material suffering and obtain the mercy of Krishna. Our only wish is to have our consciousness purified by the words emanating from his lotus mouth. Attachment to his lotus feet is the perfection that fulfills all desires. He opens my, our darkened eyes and fills our heart with transcendental knowledge. He is our Lord, birth after birth. From him ecstatic prema emanates, by him ignorance is destroyed. The Vedic scriptures sing of his character. Our spiritual master is the ocean of mercy, friend of the poor, lord and the master of the devotees. O oh, master, be merciful unto us. Give us the shade of your lotus feet. Your fame is spread all over the three worlds. Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Another wonderful song by Naratam Das Thakur. It's actually, there's a, an extended version of this song, it's much longer, but this is the important part that Prabhupada selected for us to, to sing. And uh, again, 
it expresses the essence of the relationship of the disciple and the guru. And this relationship is one of service, really. The essential part of the relationship of the disciple with the guru is one of service. Because ultimately, we are all servants of Krishna. Yes. So we learn how to render service to Krishna through the guru. He is what we, we I don't hear it that often in, uh, anymore in lectures, but Prabhupada used to say, and we used to use these words, the transparent via media. The guru is the transparent via media. That means by serving the guru, we are actually, he is transparently offering the service to Krishna. The service is not for him necessarily. He is not accepting the service because, oh, I'm the spiritual master, I'm so great, and therefore I deserve to be served. That's not the mentality of the guru. The guru is offering the service of the disciple to Krishna so that the disciple can advance in his love of God. And this is a point I, I would like to make, uh, you know, that um, it's a kind of a, a tangent in a way, but it, it's related, that yasya devi parabhaktir tatha deve tatha guru tasyaite katita hyarta prakashante mahatmana. To those who have implicit faith in the guru and in Krishna, all the imports of the Vedas are revealed. So, by serving the Guru, what is our objective? Of course, we want to please him, we love him, we want to serve him. He's our Lord and Master. As we're, the song that we're singing, he opens our darkened eyes, he fills our hearts with transcendental knowledge, he's our Lord birth after birth. Not even just this birth. We're ready to serve him birth after birth wherever he goes. But what is the objective is he wants to offer us to Krishna. He wants us to develop our love for Krishna also. So the relationship is two. The relationship is with the guru as the guide, as the teacher, the spiritual master, the transparent via media, the link. But the second is to Krishna, that he wants us to connect to Krishna with love in one of the relationships of rasa, the four primary relationships of rasa. There are five but one Shantaras is not necessarily considered a rasa, but the other rasas of service, parental affection, friendly love, and conjugal love. So our esteemed Akrurnath Prabhu is here. <laughs> to hear you speak, but Yes, well, you have to sit next to me, and then I'll sit at your feet in a minute. So I'll just, I'll finish up and then, yeah. okay, this, the point that I was making. So the, gu the guru's mission is that everyone should develop their Krishna prema, their love for God. And it is through the spiritual master who is as good as God, sakshad hari tvena samastu shastir uktas tata bhavyata eva sarabhi. Kintu praburya priya eva tasya go vande guru shri charnan. He's as good as God because he's God's representative. So, but he wants us to learn to love God also. So it is a two, the path is to develop love for the guru and love for Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead in prema bhakti and to go back to the spiritual world, to be with Krishna, serving him 
in our particular relationship, and the guru guides us along the way. Sometimes it's the Diksha guru, sometimes the Siksha guru, but the guru is one. So th these are just, you know, siddhantas about the guru, but um, they're always nice to mention on the appearance day or the disappearance day of the acharya, the spiritual master, just to remind us of um, what, what our purpose is and what we're trying to do and to stay fixed, to stay determined with full resolve. These are days for recommitting our vows and our dedication, increasing more and more. So that uh, is uh, an important part of, the, of this um, day, the disappearance day of Srila Prabhupada, that even though he's no longer here, he is present in his books, his instructions, his disciples, uh, his murti, his temples, in all these different ways, he is still here. And as we ad advance more and more, we can appreciate that presence and take advantage of it. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I wanted to ask you, Sananda Prabhu, where were you when you heard that Prabhupada had passed oh. away? Yeah, I was in I was in St. Louis. I was part of the traveling Sankirtan party, Radha Damodar, very famous uh, <clears throat> preaching book distribution festival program. We had five or six converted Greyhound buses that traveled all over the country, only with brahmacharis. So towards the the end of that program. For some reason, I don't remember, it was coming to a close and I was in St. Louis with Tripurari Swami and uh, many other devotees. And I, I was in the kitchen at that moment, or I was, I think I was in the kitchen at that moment, or not at that moment, but I was in the kitchen cooking. And we, we all knew that, it, that Prabhupada could disappear at any moment that it could, um, you know, we're just waiting for that phone call. Sorry. So there was a big kirtan in the temple room, I remember I was there, and uh, we were chanting and chanting, and then Tripurari Swami came down, and we could tell from the look in his face that, it, that Prabhupada had left. That's how I heard him. I knew, I heard also, yeah. I was clean, I was in Vancouver. By the way, I was in the St. Louis temple until Oh. Uh, until early 77, I think. So I used oh. to clean that kitchen, that same kitchen <laughs> all the time, with Nata Das and some of the other cooks there. And where but were you at that time? Probably? I was in Vancouver, oh. and I was sweeping the floor in the temple and on the stairs in the old 16th Street in Granville Temple before they bought that Marine Drive property mm. in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I also, bah, uh, Bahudak, the temple president, was in the office and he got a phone call, and somehow, I don't know how, I knew that that's what he was hearing on the phone call, maybe just by his mood or something, uh, even though I wasn't hearing what was on the other line. And I started chanting Jai Prabhupada, and when he got off the phone, he just completely like, burst into tears and ran into the temple room and, and uh, fell down in front of Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa son and was like sobbing very loudly and uh, it was very, I mean, we, you know, we would get like regular, there, would, there was always reports of what Srila Prabhupada was doing, even if though we were serving from a distance and he was traveling around the world and then he was in Vrindavan for 
this time, a long time. He was going to come to another tour and he got to England and then he had some health problems and they told him he had to go back. And then he decided he would stay in Vrindavan at least uh, unless he got strong enough to be, be over this crisis. And, um, but we would always be hearing like the tape ministry would be coming out with tapes Every week we would get new tapes to listen to while we did our service. If, if, we, you know, if we're out on book distribution, we couldn't, but we would hear those tapes on the, in the car on the way back sometimes or whatever. But when I was doing kitchen service in St. Louis, certainly, I would always, we were always hearing new things that Srila Prabhupada would do that would always surprise and enliven us. It was something very special that, you know, that he was physically present. And we had so much hope that, you know, he would, be able to guide us. I mean, one thing that that I'm sure that Sunanda would agree with me is he he left us with a sense. He gave us. He transmitted to us a sense of this sort of inevitable purpose that we were. I mean, his mission was really not just to have a nice temple where people could come and worship Krishna and chant Hare Krishna, but it was really to to conquer the world with this Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan movement. That it was going to be. Um, you know, uh, something that everybody would be be able to get involved with, that people would love chanting and and leaders would take it up and be serious about it. And it you know, they would be reading these books. This wasn't just from Prabhupada. His spiritual master and Bhaktivinoda Thakur had spoken on these subjects that, you know, this wasn't just, um, you know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur didn't just accept Lord Chaitanya because he was, you know, from Bengal. He actually studied all the different religions and philosophies of the world. And then he concluded that, you know, Lord Chaitanya was the, um, you know, most, the, the actual perfect golden avatar, most merciful avatar for the age. And, um, and this was, Srila Prabhupada had, in, had inherited this, mission from Bhakti Siddhanta. Srila Prabhupada had many godbrothers who had nice temples and lots of people coming and having festivals and getting initiated and doing all kinds of things. But Srila Prabhupada's guru had told him to go preach in the Western world. And, he, and his, his, Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master had told him Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had very much um, that in mind, that he spent money to send disciples to England, and he really had in mind that uh, we were going to spread Krishna consciousness everywhere and make it, um, like I said, a, a dominant spiritual cultural force in the world. And, uh, and that's the mission that Srila Prabhupada left us with. And he, um, even though it seemed like, it would seem to rational person almost like what you know when Prabhupada was asking Sumati Muraji to send him on one of her ships she was thinking you know old man you're going to die there you know what are you doing what you know this this idea that he was going to go and he was saying no I'm going to make many temples and I'm going to have many disciples western disciples and so forth and um, you know people um, people would think that that's, you know, shooting for the impossible. But um, it wasn't just some kind of reckless spirit, uh, some kind of, you know, quixotic idea that I can, you know, I can be grandiose and have these. It was a realization, deep realization, that with Krishna anything is possible, that Lord Chaitanya wants this, that this, the, the previous acharyas are saying this, and Srila Prabhupada understood this. I mean, he understood how to actually give bhakti to people where you would least expect it. And he, um, you know, charged us with that mission. And that's the mission that we have to um, continue passing on through generations of devotees. That uh, ISKCON is not just meant to be one of many um, different temples that you might choose to go to or something. But it's these books... Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar of Devotion, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, you know, Bhagavad Gita as it is, that is a Vaishnava 
interpretation, not a Mayavadi interpretation. Um, these are um, like this is essential for us to to transmit. So I don't know where I got what I got off on that, but uh, but that we were getting that inspiration from Srila Prabhupada, and then uh, we were concerned. You know, actually, Srila Prabhupada told us that if we doubled book distribution, um, he wouldn't he wouldn't leave. He would he would live for another hundred years. He said, <laughs> right? Remember? Yes, remember? And and we believed that. I mean, I did. I was, you know, an 18-year-old brahmachari, and I was out distributing books and thinking, yeah, we got to just keep distributing these books more and more, and because w what will we do if Prabhupada left? I mean, really, what would we do? Who would know how to do anything? We, we weren't, there was no, we didn't have a, they say in sport, like in sports, a team has a deep bench, you know, they have all these, you know, really, good stars and if somebody gets an injury or something like that they can have another really good quarterback but Prabhupada was our only you know quarterback he was our only star really or that's the way we felt uh, you know could we could we live up to the mission he gave us and it was and it was very difficult uh, in the decades that passed after he passed away we had to struggle with our immaturity and our you know not understanding of how to do everything and, and things like that, but that, <clears throat> but like Sunanda said, the importance on the disappearance day is to remember that uh, that he's present in his books and his service and his mission, and um, you know just when we remember him, his personality um, and everything about him, his drive. He was a um, very vigorous, bold preacher as was his spiritual master. And his spiritual master liked that. Uh, and, um, and he encouraged that. He had uh, many disciples, but he promoted those who could get things done, right? He liked results. I mean, yes, Krishna consciousness, it's an internal thing. It's a change of heart. Um, but um, Srila Prabhupada never liked the idea of a disciple going and sitting down at Radha Kund and chanting 64 or 100 rounds a day or whatever. That wasn't his mission. He didn't want, he didn't encourage his disciples to do that. And rather, he didn't even uh, think that they could be successful at that kind of approach. Um, he wanted us to work really hard to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. And he assured us that uh, Lord Chaitanya would recognize that work. That, um, you know, it wasn't just that, you know, we were doing something busily without any purpose or something, but we were actually doing something. I mean, of course, we're worshiping the deity, cooking for the deity, chanting our rounds, prescribed number of rounds, at least 16 minimum rounds. But we were meant to distribute books and... Um, Sometimes I hear devotees losing faith, like, oh, we've distributed so many books and where are all the devotees and stuff. Well, there are devotees and, and every one of us has been touched by his books. And this was his, his, in fact, he gave us this instruction. He said that I'm blindly following. My spiritual master told me to print books and I'm blindly following. Of course, he wasn't blind about anything, but he wanted us to to accept that, don't don't lose faith in this book distribution. Um, that this is um, the most effective way of actually uh, accomplishing our purpose. Of course, everything else has to go on, but um, that uh, sympathy to the Harinam Sankirtan and the and the uh, book distribution is something that Srila Prabhupada wanted to leave us with. Uh, all of his disciples know that. He emphasized that. And, um, and um, he wants, I think he wants us to emphasize that going forward. That's why I'm so happy to be here in the association of Vaisheshika Das, who is, you know, really uh, so important. And Tripurari Swami was the incarnation of book distribution. He, he 
was going around to these airports. St. Louis had an airport. It was close to Fort Leonard Wood where the Marine Corps trained, uh, had a, was it the Marine or Army? It was Army. I think it was the Army training. The Marine was Paris Island in, in like the Carolinas or something like that. And Fort Leonard Wood was uh, the Army um, like training camp where the soldiers went to get. And so they were always buying the books in the airport. That was one of the uh, attractions of the St. Louis Airport Y, Tripurari Swami and Sura and Vaisheshika and um, so many of the other uh, stalwart, Pragosh and the other stalwart book distributors would come there to, to work the airport. Um, then uh, Dhruva Maharaj and some others. Sura. Uh, Sura, yeah. Do any of you know Sura? He's in the LA, he's in the BBT in the LA. So the disappearance day of Srila Prabhupada is, is um, supposed to be a day when we can reflect. And I often feel like, are we doing, are we accomplishing our mission? Don't we have such, you know, why am I not, you know, sort of pure enough and um, potent enough to be actually successfully preaching Srila Prabhupada's teachings and, and his books? It makes me introspective and... Um, feel in, inadequate, but it, it should. I mean, it should inspire us when we're thinking about this, meditating on this, that Srila Prabhupada did give us everything we need. He gave us what, you know, within his time allotted by Krishna, he completely dedicated himself, completely. You could see that, that he was uh, 24 hours practically, hardly sleeping. He was always enthusiastic to preach. His servants had to try to keep people from coming up to his room because he would always eagerly go on speaking about Krishna constantly and wouldn't get any rest and he would also you know have this important mission to write his books and and really to manage our movement he was trying to always get out of the management he was always saying that he wanted to leave his disciples to take over management but most of his disciples were young in their 20s still uh, with a, and had been a lot of them had been hippies without a lot of experience in the business world or the legal, you know, and the um, you know different kind of things that needed to be done, real estate and insurance and all that stuff, and uh, and man, even managing each other there would sometimes be quarrels and things that he would have to mediate, and or somehow you know um, alleviate. Correct. So he couldn't completely get out of management. He was a, a dynamo, you know, a Vaikuntha man. He was doing things uh, su with superhuman strength even in his 80s or late 70s. And uh, so, yeah, it was, um, for me, it was devastating. I was still very young and I, I hadn't. You know, I'd seen Prabhupada give lectures in the temple room and things, but I wasn't in a temple where he stayed often. When I was in St. Louis, we went up to the Detroit temple. He, he was there, and we went to the Rathiatras in New York and Chicago. But I didn't have, I never went on a morning walk. I never um, had a personal dialogue with Srila Prabhupada. When they would make lots and lots of cookies that Prabhupada would pass out to the children and they would always make so many that he would have a bunch left over and he would give it to the to the adults. And I I feel guilty about it now, but I when I went up to get my cookie I made sure that I touched his hand. <laughs> but do you do you did you Spend much time with Srila Prabhupada at all? Or? I did <clears throat> very little. I mean, I, I, I actually did go on some morning walks here and there in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan and uh, in Potomac. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did, I joined in New York City, so Prabhupada was there quite a bit. And I was, fortunately, I have a whole collection of photos of Prabhupada in which I'm also present, which is nice to have. And um, the closest association was when I cooked for Prabhupada one time. 
I don't know. Did you ever hear this story? No. Okay. Here Always. Swayam tu navitripyama utamishloka varta. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> swadu, swadu. We, we're always eager to hear these nectar oh, stories. Yeah. Yeah, this was a nice, uh, this is again back on Radha Damodar when uh, we had just left um, Detroit Temple with the bus and uh, we were headed to New York City for the Rathiatra. And uh, Prabhupada was going to be there for the Rathiatra. So we arrived. Prabhupada was there. And Prabhupada had, um, was a little sick. He had a cold. But at the same time, he wanted to a ride on the bus. And specifically, he wanted to go to Gita Nagari. He wanted to see the farm. I don't know if he'd been there before, maybe. Uh, I can't. Oh, actually, I think this was the first visit because I just found the video of the bus ride, and I'm in that video, and of his tour of Gita Nagari. So I think it was his first visit. But um, so he was sick. He wanted this ride to Gita Nagari, and the there was no cook available uh, because this ride was to take place early in the morning right after Mangalar, during Mangalarti actually, and then the prasadam was supposed to be served on the bus. So when I said earlier that these were greyhound buses, they were all converted into temple rooms and kitchens. So all the seats were taken out, and then there was a temple room with an altar. Most of the, the buses had Gornatai deities, except for the Radhadamadar bus, which had Radhadamadar, who are now in, in uh, Gita Nagari. And then there was a kitchen, there was a shower, there were cubbies for the brahmacharis to keep their clothing. So it was like a, a traveling temple. You had so, a shower in the, in the bus? Yeah, or? there was a shower. Or maybe, maybe not. Yeah, because well, I was on Radhadamadar's bus for okay, a while. Maybe there was no shower. Radhadamadar's bus. Whose, whose bus were you on? Which, who was the bus leader? Oh, well, there were a few. Mahamuni was the uh -huh. first, and then Brahma. Yeah. Brahma. Mahamuni was on the Radhadamadar's bus when I was on that bus. Oh, okay. the, and Brahma had a different bus. Brahma had a different bus at that time, maybe, yeah. So, but I was also on the Radhadamadar bus for a while, but uh, I can't remember who was. I joined in Detroit when the bu from New York Temple. Mm -hmm. And the bus went to Detroit for the Christmas marathon, book distribution marathon. Mm -hmm. So Radha Damodar were there. But I think right after that, I think it was Mahamuni. Anyway, was this like 74 or 70? Yeah, 75. Five. This, was the, this was the Christmas marathon before Vishnu John Maharaj disappeared. Mm. So 75. And uh, so back to that story. So. Yes, the no cook was available, so they asked me to be the cook. Obviously, I was familiar with how to do it on a moving bus. You know, it's hard enough to cook in a regular kitchen sometimes, so imagine going down a highway 60 miles an hour, and you're trying to cook in a kitchen. <laughs> so, that's another story is one time there was an accident and a walk of hot ghee spilled all over my leg and ended up in the hospital. Well, not in the hospital, getting you know, bad burns. I still have the scar. This, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, scar, yes, the scar. Anyhow, so pro, I, I was the cook. Now, I'll, I'll try to make it a little brief here. So um, I was told Prabhupada is sick. He doesn't eat anything except fruit. So I packed a whole container full of all different kinds of fruit. They told me some sannyasis were coming, and there were um, uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, and Pushta Krishna Maharaj was there, and Triparari Swami was there, and uh, Bali Mardan, 
and a few others that I don't remember their names, and Adi Keshava, I think Swami was also there. So I had all this stuff, and then Mangal Arti, they had, I was in the kitchen. I didn't have the, the uh, fortune of being in the temple room during Mangal Arti with Prabhupada, except that I did the Arti in front of Prabhupada, which was very wonderful. Again, on a moving bus, Arti. And then I went back to the kitchen, and then they had their japa, and then the class, all on the moving bus, because it's about a three-hour ride, I think, from New York to Gidanagari, or two hours, or three hours. So then breakfast time. So I was cut all this wonderful fruit, so, and so many different kinds of fruit, made plates for everyone. They brought them in. And Prabhupada made a very unusual request. This is... This is the point of the story that gets exciting. Prabhupada made a very unusual request. He was sick, remember. So, but he wanted green chili pakoras. <laughs> green chili pakoras. I never even heard that anybody ate green chili pakoras. The purpose, though, I understood later, was because he was sick, so he wanted something that would produce heat in his body to fight the cold. So the green chilies. Um, and the ghee also was fried in ghee, because that's all we used those days. We didn't use oil. <laughs> no, never did. We never used oil. No kind of oil, always ghee. So anyhow, I set up my special ghee pot. I didn't use a wok anymore since that accident. I had a special ghee pot that was like a, a foot tall, and I just filled it like an inch full of ghee in, inside. Heated it up, but all I had was a cauliflower. I didn't have a green chilies, because again, I wasn't prepared for this. They told me Prabhupada would just eat fruit, but I had one head of cauliflower. But just try to imagine a head of cauliflower. How many pakoras can you make out of a head of cauliflower? Quite a few. You could probably feed uh, you know, five, six, seven people with a, with a pakora meal with one head of cauliflower. So I proceeded to make the cauliflower pakoras and they would bring them into Prabhupada, the first batch. You guys remember, we're driving down the road 60 miles an hour early in the morning. It's, you know, the sun is coming, just coming up. And they bring the pakoras to Prabhupada and I get a message, Prabhupada wants more. <laughs> so I, I kept cooking another batch of pakoras, and then Prabhupada wants more. And another batch of pakoras, and another. Prabhupada ate the entire head of cauliflower. I mean, it's possible he might have distributed a few to some of the others, but they were all eating fruit. But he ate the entire head of cauliflower. And... Uh, I was astounded. I think probably everyone was astounded. But the best part was when I went into the temple room to collect the plates and bring them into the back to, to wash or whatever, to keep them till later. And Tamal Krishna Maharaj introduced me to Prabhupada. And he said, Prabhupada, this is Sunanda, the cook. And Prabhupada, uh, I didn't know what to say. I said, oh, I said, oh, oh you like the pakoras. And Prabhupada just didn't say anything. He just sat and smiled and with his head, you know, like this. <laughs> so that That's was... a lot of mercy that he ate the whole... Yeah, it's very, the, un, the, very unique, the, unusual. The, Must have been a good cauliflower pakoras, I guess. <laughs> Those buses were very important in our preaching. And they went everywhere, and if you went to the Ratyatra, Vishnu Janaswami would be announcing that, would any young men like to just get some experience of traveling with a group of monks, you know, come, <laughs> come and join us on our bus and travel around the country with us, learn to play Indian musical instruments, and you know. <laughs> and, uh, and they would do festivals, they would go to colleges and they would do you know, festivals, chanting and things, and people would come up and they would talk to the students. 
And Vishnu Janaswamy was just such a powerful preacher, such and a and a wonderful person. Everybody loved him and he was good at everything. Hmm. And humble. But when I joined the bus, that was the year he didn't come back. So everyone was saying that Tamal Krishna and Vishnu Janaswamy would be back soon. And neither one of them, that was 76 at um, Gaur Purnima time. And uh, Prabhupada sent Tamal Krishna Maharaj to China to start the movement in China. And uh, so Jayananda was on that bus yeah. and Mahamuni was in charge. Yeah, I was on the bus with Jayananda also, so yeah. maybe we were on the bus together. Ah, uh, but I was in 76, it could be. When I was in 76, so Bhuta Bhavana was cooking, Mukunda was driving, um, Nilambar was also yeah. doing some cooking. I remember I was with Jayananda also. Yeah. And uh, for special days, but these, you know, transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya are still going on. And uh, the devotees here are doing such a wonderful job of book distribution and, and Harinam festivals as well. And this is our. Um, our duty, our occupation, the way we can be close to Srila Prabhupada and please Srila Prabhupada. Huh? Very fortunate. Very mm -hmm. fortunate. Yeah. So, we'll have Pushpanjali at, at uh, did you say 7.15 or 7? Yeah, 7.15, 7.20. 7.15 or 7.20. I would like to ask that, um, you know, Bali Mardan Prabhu, Shraddha, anyone who has something that uh, you were preparing to say on this occasion, this solemn occasion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Shla Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Also, I'd like to give my humble obeisances to Prabhupada disciples, Sunanda Prabhu and Akrunath Prabhu taking your permission into Lotus Feet because you have served Prabhupada personally, direct disciples of Prabhupada, and we have been guided by many Prabhupada disciples in our society, which is very fortunate and very auspicious condition for all of us. So I'd like to give my deepest gratitude to all the disciples of Prabhupada, especially Vaisistika Prabhu Nirkula Mataji, who is present here, Jagrani Mataji, yourself, and many other Vaishnavas who have got, I got personal guidance, personal association. So one thing which struck my mind, I was reading about the pictures of Mahatma Gandhi's in the Bhagavad Gita and I was contemplating about, because many of the devotees or those who are in ISKCON member just quote that Prabhupada, how he challenged like Mahatma Gandhi is not Mahatma, or there is a science of self-realization. He's saying Prabhupada that Gandhism is like dogism. Uh, there are very one or two very heavy critic points there. So I was wondering, in spite of that, what makes us to give Mahatma Gandhi's picture on the back of Bhagavad Gita? There is a chapter in Prabhupada Lila Amrut called The Unknown. So profound. Prabhupada has actually criticized or given the comment. What's the chapter called? The Unknown. The Unknown. Yes, okay. the Unknown. Only one or two criticism he has given about Mahatma Gandhi, which is true, but he has glorified ten points. I was so deeply touched that how Prabhupada has seen every aspect of life of every human being. So I'm just giving some few insight of that, which is, the quote generally Prabhupada makes, he said, Mahatma Gandhi, either he is a politician amongst the saints or a saint amongst the politicians. Mm -hmm. She has really given, and he is the second point he mentioned that Mahatma Gandhi also, he never missed prayer in his, during his busiest time in his life. He never missed a single evening. Even in his association, he attended the prayer. So we should get some inspiration from Gandhi. Then also he said the third point about Gandhi, because he has written a letter. 
and in the latter he has mentioned one sloka from Bhagavad Gita Tadvidhi Pranipadena Pariprashnana Sevaya Upadeksimpita Gyanim Gyaninam Tantra Darshina and he, he, and he mentioned that the reason he is giving and reaching out to Mahatma Gandhi for twofold one is he was also followed of Mahatma Gandhi I have some emotional linkage and second thing is that Mahatma Gandhi is the only person in India at the time he can influence people to adopt to take Bhagavad Gita because he was referring it back when before the Mahatma Gandhi's time the guy who was writing from Rindavan his name is uh, Madan Mohan Pratap he is starting this called religion of love and he was inspiring Prabhupada to read his book and then come and join his hands because he thought the Prabhupada's all his blogs all his writings are based on Bhagavad Gita and Prabhupada also mentioned that I like your ideas of humanitarian and everything but it is all pantheism we are on monotheism which is inspiring and getting the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and same thing Prabhupada was giving and the last point he mentioned there are many I don't want to take all the time but the one point also he said Gandhi also got trained because in 1942 in the Quit India movement before when he wanted to introduce Raghupati Raghav Rajaram and other things he got it this mantra from Vrindavan when he visited Hare Krishna mantra or? Hare Krishna oh. not the special there is a bhajan some of the Krishna bhajan and Ram bhajan so he was deeply sorrowed and kind of disturbed so he got from Vrindavan one Babaji about the deeply surrendered to God that's the only because you are not the controller neither you can things change it only thing it can be changed by the ultimate Lord and from that and what he wants to make a system from every Hindus and every Indians to follow the bhajan principles no matter whether there is a uh, conflict there is a religious fight so there are various things which Prabhupada actually indirectly glorified really Gandhi is a lot in terms of it's really his. a remarkable letter that letter that is in the Lilamrita that they found Prabhupada kept copies of his letters you know he was very organized like that yes. and he had written but he was telling Mahatma Gandhi even though Mahatma Gandhi was very famous world person worldwide Srila Prabhupada was telling him that um, I understand that you have never taken a spiritual master I would be happy to instruct you about Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Actually, he was thinking that if he could make a disciple of Gandhi, then he could spread Krishna consciousness very far. It's, um, um, you know, most of you probably have read or some, at least some of Gandhi's autobiography. He, it was coming out in a newspaper in series, uh, Story of My Experiments with Truth. And uh, the the theme was that he had, you know, gone to see the rest of the world. So, similar to something I was saying about Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that he had studied all the philosophies and all the religions. And, you know, he wasn't, his family were not a Vaishnava family. They were, they were, uh, they worshipped uh, Durga, as many people do in Bengal. And, but he had studied everything. And then he, but then he understood Lord Chaitanya. So Gandhi's approach was also that he was experimenting. He had gone to... Um, different to to England to study and so forth but he just kept coming back to realizing that everything that he had learned in India was actually superior vegetarianism and so forth but um, but Srila Prabhupada was saying this isn't the way that we receive um, spiritual knowledge about Krishna we don't receive it through experimentation it's not an ascending process it's not a uh, you know that's people in Kali Yuga or na nowadays it's fashionable that we don't just accept somebody as an authority and accept what they say but we have to see it with our own senses you know because there are counterfeit authorities. Srila Prabhupada said that if there's counterfeit money that means there must be real money somewhere and so it's, com it's a common thing that people say you know nobody's perfect or nobody uh, uh, nobody knows everything or you know there, there's the, this this sense that everybody since I'm in the dark everybody's in the dark right but that's not the truth our senses are very limited way uh, I mean not that we should abandon trying to learn about the world with our senses and our reasoning and so forth but um, we can't really learn about what the most essential knowledge that way 
And the spiritual masters, the actual bona fide spiritual masters who have realization of um, this message that's handed down through Parampara, the same message of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, they can give perfect knowledge to those who are receptive and come with a service attitude and receptive heart and become and learn how to surrender. We have to learn how to surrender to the spiritual master that teaches us how also to surrender to Krishna and it enlightens us. He opens our darkened eyes with transcendental knowledge. <coughs> He's our Lord birth after birth. From him ecstatic prema emanates, by him ignorance is destroyed. The Vedic scriptures sing of his character. So this um, Gandhi had not yet accepted a spiritual mass. He, had, he hadn't really accepted the parampara system, although clearly in Bhagavad Gita that system is recommended. You know, evang parampara prapta mimang raja shayo vidu. So Prabhupada was actually offering that if you want to actually really understand Bhagavad Gita better, um, you know, I'm, I'm a serious student. I don't know if Prabhupada was yet a sannyasi, but um, he was offering, you know, come let's talk about Bhagavad Gita. Although I don't know any history that, uh, that Gandhi was able to take him up on it. And I don't know the date of the letter. I think he quickly was, soon after was he was assassinated. Yeah, it was kind of a Gandhi's, like just after independence, his Prabhupada moved to Kanpur. Uh -huh. And he started this pharmaceutical, but he had approached like Ayer, Gandhi's mm -hmm. personal secretary at that time. Mm -hmm. And he has connection at, and they could not accept it because he doesn't know whether he received it or not. Probably yes, because he has given, but he has not accepted. By the time when Prabhupada also sent letter to West Bengal chief minister and all to accept the Bhagavad they said, oh, it is, it may be, we are secularism because Hindu Muslim brides, so you cannot just talk about Bhagavad Gita to adopt. So he has approached pretty much all big shots mm -hmm. in, in, in India to make sure that they accept. Even after that, Indra yeah. Gandhi also. There's a famous out. picture with uh, when Prabhupada got his uh, Bhagavatam published and he's standing with Shastri. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So was, Prabhupada thought big. He, he wanted us to, on the one hand, we have to approach everyone. Lord Nityananda was beggar for, for people to just chant Hare Krishna and the common people and everything. And at the same time, we shouldn't be uh, intimidated. Oh, this person is a big minister or a big, or a big famous you know, literary lion or something like that. They're all just struggling with birth and death and old age and the same kind of problems that this, you know, the bhava rog, that, that uh, the, the disease we're all suffering from. And by the grace of our spiritual master, um, we have the cure. So we have to take the cure ourselves and we have to distribute it freely. Yeah. So now it's time for the Pushpanjali. So please put the seats away and, um, and we'll stand in front of uh, Srila Prabhupada. Make, make sure to leave a, a line of sight yeah. that don't stand in front of the deities. So let Srila Prabhupada be able to see the deities. So just quick announcement, the, after the Pushpanjali, so it, uh, Akunath Prabhu is going to recite the mantra. So please keep this flower and it will be offered three times. So 7.30 after, just after that, 7.30 there will be two aarti, one will be inside for Radha Madan Mohan at the same time with Prabhupada and we will singing Sansar Davanala. Then after that 7.55 we will have the nursing a prayer and 8 o'clock sharp we will be also chanting the Damodara Stakam and <coughs> 8.20 we'll have the Gopi Gita. So please do not do the ghee lamp offering during the Prabhupada Aarti. So ghee lamp offering will be started at 8 p.m. Yeah. Okay, so the people who are leading Damodarashtakam by Vishwapati Nithan Prabhu and Gopi Gita by Akhandanam Prabhu. Akhandanam. And Sansar Davanala by you. Sorry. Aarti led by Srivas Pandit Prabhu. Okay. So please everybody get get some flowers. Make sure you don't throw the
please make sure you leave a, a space for Srila Prabhupada to see the deities and everybody take some flowers. We're going to chant the Mangala Charanam. And, uh, and then um, I guess we'll, I'll chant and you repeat. And then uh, don't throw all your flowers at once because you have to have enough for three times. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militang Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapi Tang Yena Putale Swayang Rupa Kadamahyam Tadati Svapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guruho Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupang Sagrajatang Sahagana Raghunathan Vitang Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitangscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Putale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Sri Varshabhanavi Devi Daitaya Kripabdhaye Krishna Sambandha Vijnana Daine Prabhave Namaha Madhur Yojvala Premadhya Sri Rupanuga Bhaktida Sri Gaura Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostute Namaste Gauravani Sri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupanuga Virudha Apasiddhanta Dvantaharine Namo Gaurakishuraya Sakshad Bhairagya Murtaye Vipralambhara Sambhode Padambu Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine Gora Shakti Swarupaya Rupanuga Varayate Gora Virbhava Pumestvam Nirdeshta Saj Janapriyaha Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Sri Jagannathaya 
Namaste Namaha Bancha Kalpatarubyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanang Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavaranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gauratvishe Namaha Panchatattvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Bhattaram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Jayatang Surato Pangol Mama Manda Matergati Matsarvasva Padam Bhojau Radha Madana Mohanau Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpa Drumadha Shri Madratnagara Singhasana Stau Shri Mad Radha Shri La Govinda Devao Prashthali Bhik Sevya Manao Smarami Shri Man Rasa Rasaram Bhiv Vangshi Vatata Tastitaha Karshan Venu Svanayar Gopir Gopi Nathak Shri Estu Naha Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Pushpanjali Jai Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Pushpanjali Jai Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Pushpanjali Jai 
जय जय Samsara dava nadali dhaloka tranaya karuna ganaganatam. Prapta sya kalyana guna navasya. Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vindam Mahaprabhu Kirtanan Ritya Gita Vaditra Madhyan Manasura Sena Shurudarangabhajo Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vindam Sri Vigrahara Adhana Nityanana Sringara Tanman Yukasya bhaktan chani junjatopi Vande guro sri charanara vindam Adana Triptan That's right. Vande Guru Sri Charanara Vinda 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 Shri Radhika Madhava Pratikshana Swadana Lolubhasya Vande Guru Sri Charanada Vindam Vande 
Nikun jayun arati keli sidhiai Yaya libhir yukti rapekshaniya Tatra ti daksha dati valabhasya Vande Guru Sri Charanaravindam Sakshad Hari Tvena Samast Shastraya Uktastata Bhavyata Eva Sadabhi Hindu Prabhuriya Priyayevatasya Vande Guru Sri Charanaravindam Yasya Prasadana Bhagavat Prasado Yasya Prasada Nagati Gutopi Jayam Stuvam Stasya Yashastri Sandham Vande Guru Sri Chadanada Vindam Vande Guru Sri Chadanada Vindam Vande Guru Sri Chadanada Vindam Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada Vande Guru Sri Chadanada Vindam Vande Guru Sri Chadanada Vindam Samsara Dhava Nala Lidha Loka Tranaya Kadu Naga Naga Natam Rivo Pratasya Kaya Naguna Navasya Vande Guru Sri Chadanara Vindam Vande Guru Sri Charanada 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 Vindam Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada. Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Jagat Guru, Shri La Prabhu Pada, Jaya Jagat Guru, Shri La Prabhu Pada.
जाया जाया गुरुदेव 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 जाया गुरुदेव जाया जाया गुरुदेव 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 Continue. Nam. Oh, okay. 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 Jai Om Vishnu Pad Brahmansa Parivraj Gacharya Ashtotara Sata Sri Sri Mahad is Divine Grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shula Prabhu Pad Ki Jai. जाय ओम विष्णु भाद ब्रह्मांड सा परिव्राज कचरे अष्टो तर सदस्य सीमाद इस दिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति विराम दशामी शुल प्रभु पाद की जाय इस दिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति विराम दशामी शुल प्रभु पाद की जाय जाय नित्यलील प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णु भाद ब्रह्मांड सा परिव्राज कचरे अष्टो तर सदस्य सीमाद शुल भक्ति अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नामचार्य शिला हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री वासादि गौर वक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण राधा मदान मोहन गिरी गोवर्धन की जय वृंदाबन मथुर दाम की जय मायापुर नवद्वीप दाम की जय जगन्नाथपुरी दाम की जय गंगमाई की जय यमुन माई की जाए, भक्ति देवी की जाए, तुलसी देवी की जाए, हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए, ट्रांसेंडेंटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की जाए, आयस्वी अत्रा की जाए, गोरा प्रेम नंदी, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Govinda. Hare Krishna.